Hey everybody and welcome to D-Pad Experience Presents Marvel Champions. D-Pad Experience is a weekly video game podcast published on all podcast platforms. But today we are doing a five minute review of Star-Lord, aka Peter Quill. Alright, I just played a game with him. I'm going to give you my thoughts fresh on him. I played before with him, but uh, after refreshing my memory with how he plays, I'm going to go through all of just his base, his cards and him. Obviously, you can make a deck out of anything you want, right? And this is a five-minute review based on my personal play style. I try to be as objective as possible, but I'm going to be five minutes and I'm on the clock. So here we go. All right, Peter Quill, three recovery, outlaw, search your deck and discard pile for a copy of Element Gun and add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. All right, smooth talker, action. Choose a card in your hand, swap that card with the top card of your deck. So you could swap out your cards. Star Lord has a two thwart, two attack, and one defense. Very weak on that defense, but two thwart and two attack are very, very nice, very strong. So each ally you control gains a guardian trait. That makes a leadership deck with him extremely strong. So what could go wrong? He's kind of his bread and butter. It allows you to play one card from your hand, but you have to deal yourself one face down and counter card and you reduce the cost of the card that you're gonna play by three. So that's one of his bread and butter cards. Now let's take a look at what is, comes in his deck. We have a two cost upgrade jet boots. It gives him aerial. And when he would take any amount of damage, you exhaust jet boots, prevent one of that damage for each face down encounter card you have. So you need encounter cards for this to be useful for the most part. Then we have, I'm gonna go to this other one. Star-Lord's Helmet, one cost upgrade. While you're in hero form, you get plus one hand size for each face down encounter card you have in front of you. So you need to be in danger for this one to work. Leaders of the Guardians, each Guardian character you control gets plus one thwart. Nice card, very expensive. So it really wants you to use this ability to pay for, to give yourself encounter cards. Nova Prime, five cost ally, two thwart, three attack, three health. After you play him, you can defeat basically any any non-elite minion. Very strong, very expensive. Want you to give yourself an encounter card. All right. Two copies of Gutsy Move. Remove two threat from a scheme and two additional threat for each face down encounter card in front of you. So as you're seeing the scheme, the theme, most of these are only beneficial when you have encounter cards. Here comes the card that you can put in your hand right away, the Element Gun. This does not need encounter card and it's very strong. Three cost upgrade, so it's expensive and it does want you to use that, right? But if you can play it without it, you exhaust it, spend one resource and deal three damage to an enemy. Extremely strong, extremely, extremely strong. A three damage for one cost. In like, So if you have two of these out, six damage a turn. All right, these two go hand in hand essentially. So you have three copies of Daring Escape and three copies of Sliding Shot. Daring Escape. Deal yourself one face down encounter card, ready your hero, and draw a card. All right, so this is basically giving you more encounter cards. And here's the Sliding Shot. So you have to have an element, gun element gunning play, right? And then there's what it does. You deal five damage to an enemy and two additional damage to that enemy for each face down encounter card you have in front of you. Let's let's run that real quick. Let's say you have two copies of Daring Escape in your hand because it's happened to me multiple times, right? So you have two copies of Daring Escape. This will let you get two encounter cards on the board. Then you use his ability to pay for this for free, giving yourself another encounter card. That's three encounter cards on the board, right? On average, I think, to play it. Because usually, again, that's how it's happened with me. So that's five damage plus two, four, six. This is an 11 cost card, 11 damage card for free because you are using this ability, all right? Now, if for some strange reason you end up with like two of these in your hand and can play them, that's 20 plus damage in a turn, which is just insane, absolutely insane. You can win games with him in 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 just a, so fast, it's ridiculous. I don't think I've ever won games quicker with him than almost anybody else. The way he can output damage is ridiculous. However, 
I've never gotten him to work successful for me, ever. I always, like this, the face down encounter cards, if you can't win on that turn, you end up with three or four encounter cards that just do can do ridiculous damage to you. So he's extremely fun to play and he's so thematic. Like this, you know, what could go wrong is exactly how Star-Lord would play. Like give me encounter cards, but we're gonna go crazy. And it works when it works, it works. And when it doesn't, it doesn't. It's just, it's so like Star-Lord, but it isn't for me. I, I have fun playing with him. I have a lot of fun playing with him. I just can't seem to win with him. It's just so hard to win with him for me. So I personally don't like him, but he is fun to play. So if you're looking for a very different character that's fun, but you're not expecting to win a lot with him, it's Star-Lord. <laughs>